What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to this segment on WMMRDB. It's Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. We're over on YouTube right now, and that means if you want to become a member of our YouTube channel, just go ahead and hit that join button right there. If you'd like to donate via PayPal, you can. Again, the information's there. Second half of the show, about 8.30, we go over on the radio exclusively because we are not censored over there. So it's a lot more fun. China Dow will be joining me. You can listen over on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com or you can actually see us over on our Discord server. That information as well is in the description box. A lot of different stuff is moving right now. If you go into the description box of the videos from now on, you'll get the articles, the whole nine yards that I'm covering. Because people want to follow up and uh, read for themselves and uh, actually get in the know, if you know what I mean. Don't forget to also go over and get your official merchandise. We're getting some demo, uh, WMMR db merchandise up really soon man radio stations taking off real good you'll also notice uh because i've been getting a lot of people asking me so i'm covering this housekeeping stuff real quick uh a lot of our videos and a lot of our audio is translated into many different freaking languages now uh since we started the radio station uh, people from all over the world are on it and they're asking us to translate uh you know the first half of the show for them so we're doing it because they're cool how you doing netherlands how you doing uk how you doing again russia man you guys are real cool over there <laughs> you're really freaking cool uh, you know it's crazy how much reach you actually get on the radio station and now we are now on iHeartRadio. they finally took us back i guess our numbers on spotify and uh, itunes were spooking them saying well you know we don't have them on there we got to get them on there well we're on there now so you to get us on uh i heart uh, podcasts and platforms you can get the replays of all the shows that we do including rocking with hollywood at 7 p.m central standard time over on the radio that's going up on the uh things we're really kicking butt on the radio side man uh again don't forget to subscribe here on youtube uh pass us around uh, we have been getting questions, uh, about Facebook. We used to live them over there. Yeah, we're not living them over there no more, man. We got tired of them being, uh, you know, giving us strikes and stuff. So it is what it is. Uh, you just see the replays and all that on YouTube. Uh, today, do take some notes here. I've been getting a hell of a lot of freaking emails man i was like what the hell did i say now you know because usually when i piss people off i piss off these clubs uh this one or that one i'm always getting emailed they hate mail or you're a jerk you're this you're that i was like man i just been covering cases lately i haven't even uh hit biker news lately and i look at it and i'm getting you know, I, the first 10 I looked at, I was like, they're all screaming about BD. I was like, what the hell BD do you do now? Well, I guess it had to do. See, we get this stuff. This is the stuff behind the scenes that you guys don't see. And a lot of people want to start this creator stuff. They want to get in their own podcast. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, anyway, I guess he did a show uh, highlighting. And I'm going to pull up the article. We're going to take a look at it about a prison guard with the uh you know he's going to jail he's getting charged with i don't know why but i guess the laws out in the east coast are a lot different and a lot of people were saying you know uh why is the thug riders have uh corrections in there why is there's cops all over the place and i'm sitting there thinking didn't i cover this subject once before I was like, a lot of people have short-term memories, or you know what, there is a lot of people that are new joined to the channel over on YouTube and the other things. And I guess they, because me and B has a good working relationship, so they're going to want my opinion on stuff. Uh, I don't know how he covered it. I didn't get to see the video. Uh, but I'm very straightforward on this type of stuff uh, when it comes to, like I said before, Correction officers in a club 
And you're probably going to kick me in the balls for this one, but why not? Whoa! I thought you didn't, you know, support Leo. Why are you saying that? You know what? That's ignorant showing on your part. Big time, if you ask me. A correctional officer, <laughs> if you have one in your crew, is more valuable than anybody else, and you don't even know it. Uh, and this is for people that's not in clubs. What is a correctional officer? A correctional officer is a freaking guy behind the walls that uh, is basically a guard, is what they are, a uh, security guard type of deal, if you ask me. Glorified freaking security guard, let's put it that way. The reason why they are valuable is if you have brothers behind bars and they're in that institution, you now have many, many ways to make your uh, brothers feel comfortable and maybe make some extra cash. All bets are off when you go in the joint, man. You've got to survive. Uh, a lot of guys uh, support their families on the inside by doing some stuff. And that's what I think uh, that irritates me a lot is people, they just have a one-sided 2D view instead of a 3D view of what happens on the streets. Now, I know motorcycle clubs ain't gangs, blah, blah, blah. But there are incidences when you might lose somebody to the joint. Well, that ain't cool. Well, here, let me tell you something. You have, and I'm going to talk about Illinois. In Illinois, most of the damn guards behind the joint are members of the GDs, vice lords. Hell, Mississippi, <laughs> I know this one good. Mississippi, a lot of them guards over there are Simon City Royals. So a lot of guards have but attachments to different organizations. They're even members of those organizations. Yeah, they might work in corrections, but that doesn't mean they don't do something on the side. So when you guys are throwing emails out that the Thug Riders are a cop club, that's bullshit. It really is, man. First of all, you don't understand the why. The second of all, you don't understand the environment in which they're in. Okay, mixed race clubs and black clubs are a lot different than the white clubs. You got to remember, there ain't that many opportunities for a lot of these people in these neighborhoods. So the first place you're going to do is you're going to take on, hey, a corrections job comes up, it pays decent, you're going to take the job. That doesn't mean you're going to rat on your whole neighborhood, man. Like I said, GD's Vice Lords here in Chicago, they're a part of it, and they're also working as a correction officer. Down in Mississippi, Royals, man, are full down there, man. They're thick. And all the guards down there have it. And those are the opportunities that present itself. So do I believe that? No, I don't believe they're a cop club. You know, it's funny, every time uh, somebody don't like a particular club, automatically it's cop club, but they have no, no, nothing to do with clubs. It, it, just coming out of them people's mouth, and they regurgitate all this crap on the internet until it gets out to uh, everybody thinks this is a, club, uh, a cop club, because one thing started, next thing you know, it went viral on the internet. It's not true. It ain't. It ain't. I believe it's a smart move. Now, you'll also have people that bang on the white set because some of them have former cops in them. Why is that bad? I don't know. Why do you think it's bad? I know how I think about it when it comes... See, I'm more on the side of making money and that's one thing that I have a hard time when people don't understand about it. I talk about this hardcore in my book coming up uh, in April uh, about how everything works and stuff. So you're going to want to see that. It's going to be brotherhood and betrayal. But 
These ex-cops that you see in some major one percenter clubs and people know them. They're no longer on the force. A, the club might have seen something in them they liked. But here's the deal, how the clubs are smart in this one. That dude still has the connections. He knows. He knows who could be on the take. He knows who's going to look the other way. It's smart business. Well, I thought they weren't a gang. Well, they're not. But hey, it's nice knowing people. You know, I'm not going to keep on going too in depth into that. Uh, type of deal, because yeah, even with the the ones, the cases I've been covering, well, you should have said this and that. You know what? I only got a half hour on the first segment before I go to the second segment on the radio, and we got to go to a different top topic. So I cover a bunch of the biker news stuff and a bunch of the biker stuff here in the first segment on YouTube instead of uh, on the radio, because we get all wacky over on the radio. It's actually a fun deal. This is more of a serious deal. So for those that are saying the club's a cop club, that's it's complete utter BS. Because you're ignorant of the situation, you're ignorant of all the moving parts. I don't know what Big D said. I haven't watched it. I'm recording this uh, segment right now. But just by looking at the emails, I think you're really freaking uh, insane to say something like that. Do I have any dealings with that club? No, I don't. They're mostly an East, club, uh, East Coast club. They're a mixed race club. They do things their own way. Uh, you know, just because I don't believe, you know, and that's one thing everybody gets going back and forth about uh, me and Demon's role. Uh, I think he's got a good thing going. You know, I'll put that out there. I do not agree at all whatsoever with his take on the scene but he's a younger kid i'm an older guy we're just never gonna see eye to eye on how things go uh he don't know how it was before and all the brutal stuff that went on and the brothers lost the joints and all that stuff uh but he's got a good platform you cannot sit there and tell me that he's a cop a part of a cop club you can't do that just because this guy here was a correctional officer. Actually, I would say the thug writers are smart as hell for doing some shit like that. Because eventually guys go to the joint. That's always going to happen when they get out there and are stupid. They're going to go to the joint. And then again, you got somebody to take care of business. So I think you're ignorant. I think you're Idiots, I think you're trying to get stuff started between BD and this group. You know, that ain't cool, man. You know, yes, this is entertainment and stuff, but you don't put that kind of stuff on people. You you know, everybody watches him too. I think he does a good show. I think he really wants to make a difference. And hey, maybe in the future it'll work. When all the older guys get out with all the thinking and all the stuff that people lost get out, maybe it'll change. But right now, I don't think so. And for though, you know, I think he's a good representative of the club. I really do. He, he does the thug writers good. I don't know about their internal politics or how that shit works with him being on there. But I think he does good, and that's, you know, just as an outside observer. So don't you guys even start going and saying this club's this or that club's that because they have this. Or, you know, the major one percenter on the East Coast that had a couple cops in there. You know, think a little more forward than you are what you get on the post. Here's what I'd say. Would your asses walk up to Al Capone? He was the hardest court gangster that ever lived. He was scared to commission out of New York City because he was so brutal. But he had cops a part of his organization. He also had tons of them on freaking payroll. The, you know, the year that he did inside of the joint, 
I'm not talking about his later ones on the IRS conviction. Or I'm talking about the early ones after St. Valentine's Day Massacre. He lived like a king inside the joint. That's because he had people on his payroll. He had the cops. He had the guards. Everybody. That is smart. That ain't stupid. So you guys might want to think about that before you start going around calling this club a cop club. Or this guy uh, supports cops because he's in the club. I never once, never once heard this guy support cops. I might be wrong, but I never once heard him say that. Not once. You guys turn pretty quick on <laughs> you guys turn pretty quick on people, man. Just because you don't like nothing something and you don't conform to the ideal of what they're doing, one, it's none of your damn business. It really isn't. And two, what the hell's it matter to you anyway? I don't know, man. That's just uh my thinking on the, the issue. So let me know what you guys think in the uh, comment section. But you guys are real assholes for doing that kind of stuff, man. My God. Anyway, here's the article. And again, this is going to be in the description box of the video. Uh, prison guard indicted as motorcycle gang outlaw. Hmm. Interesting. We covered this before. Uh, when it happened last year, I believe. A suspended senior correctional police officer at a northern state prison was indicted on charges including official misconduct for falsifying a prison's record to conceal his membership in an outlaw motorcycle gang. The Office of Public Integrity and Accountability obtained a state grand jury indictment charging Ruben Morales, a.k.a. Mo Mocap Capo, 42 of Orange, uh, New Jersey, with the following... Official misconduct, second degree, tampering with public records or information, third degree, hindering apprehension or prosecution, thir uh, third degree, and false filing or tampering with records, fourth degree. Why the hell was he even charged? That's what I don't get. Who cares if he's a member of a club? But in New Jersey, their pricks are so damn hard for the pagans or the thunder guard. All of them, their pricks are hard. So they're going to do whatever they can to hurt somebody. And I think that's what this case is here right now. This guy probably had nothing on his freaking record while he was in the joint. Probably had a crystal clean one. But as soon as he was found out to be one of these clubs, then they went after him. Uh, Morales was charged, com uh, complained on, all. yeah, it was August 13th of 2020 with uh, tampering with public records or information and falsifying uh, with records. He was suspended uh, from his job as a senior correctional officer. So he's a senior correctional officer. He's losing his job because of this. And we talk about this a lot, about how people are losing their jobs because they're a part of motorcycle clubs. That's some nasty business, if you ask me. Nasty business. Uh... Quote, absolutely no law enforcement officer should be a member of a subversive uh, group or gang. And with correctional police officers, there is a special concern related to the destabilization and dangerous impact that gang activity and gang rivalries have in prison. By allegedly floating disclosure uh, requirements, falsifying official records, and being an active member of a motorcycle gang, he violated his oath and duties as a correctional officer. You know what? That's bull. It really is bull. You know, that's what this DOJ crap, man. It gives these carte blanche to all these enforcement agencies to be pricks. Uh, he was allegedly uh, has been a member of two nationally recognized outlaw motorcycle gangs. The Thug Riders and the Thunder Guards. As a state, so you're gonna call the, you know what? For those going around calling uh, the Thug Riders a cop club, are you gonna call the Thunder Guards that too? You're idiots if you think that. I, you know, it, the, the multiple emails that said that to me, you're a bunch of pricks. 
You really don't know what you're talking about. No, they're not. Uh, and you'll actually learn in the next story about just how, you know what? This was held against him, but there's another one coming up that's going to freak you out a little bit. Uh, as a state employee, he must renew his state-issue identification card every three years. The card identifies him as a law enforcement officer, grants him access to state buildings, and marks him as an emergency responder. I really hope somebody like NCOC or NCOM, you know, comes and does something about this. Get the word out on this one. This one sucks. Guy was just doing his work riding a motorcycle. Hopefully NCOM or somebody gets involved in this one. Uh, it's further alleged, uh, secondary, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that's the article I think Black Dragon covered. I, again, I don't know what he had to say about it, but this is uh, Amanda Rampus, and this will be in the description box. But I don't see what the guy did wrong being a member of it. No, those clubs ain't a cop club, so enough. You know, you guys start these damn rumors. It's bad enough. Now, this one is what I was talking about. Sons of Silence member pleads to a weapons charge. And this is cops for you. This is cops for you. And you'll see down there a little bit, but this is a totally BS freaking case, man. And he probably had no other choice than to plead because they'd throw the freaking uh, book at him. And cost them all kinds of money. So it's like, damn, man, here's the, it's a shotgun for Christ's sakes. That's all it is. It's not even sawed off. Sons of Silent member has pleaded to federal gun charges stemming from a 2020 raid. Justice Anthony Carlson, 38 of Sheffield, pleaded to one count of felon in a possession of a firearm Friday in U.S. District Court in Sioux City. He remains free pending sentence, which is a good, uh, good deal. Now, authorities allege that he's an enforcer for the motorcycle club. The authorities do. Was in possession of a J.O. Israeli Arms 9mm pistol and a J.C. Higgins 12-gauge uh, shotgun despite a prior felony drug conviction. I've talked about that before. I cannot believe... I think Texas does, though, where felons can get their rights back after a felony charge, but I don't think that's the way the uh, original founders intended the Second Amendment. But anyway, the weapons were found when police searched the homes of club members on June 11th after an off-duty officer was threatened by a group wearing Sons of Silence and sworn Silence vests while riding his motorcycle with his wife. Now, this is very interesting here. How do they know it was even his? Ah, they use that felony crap where you can't be around them. But they don't know if these were his. The officer! Here you go, you freaking punks. Oh, I can't stand these Leos that do this stuff. Now, he called the cops. He called 911. The officer was wearing a vest with the Gunfighters logo with an Iowa rocker. Denoting membership in the Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club's Iowa chapter. But this guy over in New Jersey, who's a correctional officer, is going to be going to the joint because of his membership. But here... In Iowa, you had this cop that was a member of the gunslingers or gunfighters, whatever you want to call them idiots, wearing a bottom rocker which denotes territory. They're all right with this? A police department, wherever it is, idiots from. You're all right with this? Courts allege a member of the group demanded the off-duty officer hand over his vest and threatened to knock his block off. When the officer responded that he didn't need to permission to wear a vest, he phoned 911 like a little prick. Yes, he called 911 like a little scared-ass prick. Yep, 
Cops always want to freaking be like everybody, but they can't back the patch. How does that make you feel, by the way, gunfighters? One of your own had to dial 911 instead of backing that patch. Kind of makes you look like a bunch of pussies. Just saying. Uh, the harassment continued until the officer phoned 911 and the group left. See, uh, you know, I don't think uh, somebody like that would harass you. I think you made a lot of shit up. I, I really do. Carlson and four others were arrested on criminal gang participation charges. But prosecutors with the Wright County office uh, dropped the charges last week for lack of evidence. Yeah, they're probably freaking scared to death to get this cop in front of a jury because he was wearing a club deal. Oh, God, we got to cover that up. Assholes. That's the way them cops work, man. Anyway, this was pretty freaky, this one. Up north, uh, Ontario police announced massive motorcycle gang bust, including seized drugs, fully automatic weapons, and hand grenades. Somebody getting crazy up there, boy. Woo! Look at them pretty things. Uh, the Provisional Biker Squad says it has dismantled four criminal networks in southern Ontario. That were selling illegal firearms, including fully automatic machine guns, dozens of hand grenades, grenade launchers, and cocaine and uh, marijuana. Two bikers connected to the Outlaws Motorcycle Club in London, Ontario, were among the 10 suspects hit with 268 charges from the eight-month investigation. That doesn't mean the club was involved in this. Could you please put that in the paper? Two uh, police say they've seized 31 firearms, 81 hand grenades, two grenade launchers. Man, that reminds me of the old rock machine Hell's Angel War, man. They get nuts up there, man. They get grenade launchers. They started firing that shit up there. They're crazy up there, man. They're crazy. <laughs> that reminds me of just that war, man, with all that hardware. Holy cow, man. Uh, holy shit. <laughs> Crazy people nowadays. So, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments section. Uh, I just think that was a bunch of horseshit with all them email stuff. And, you know, you gotta call that kind of stuff out. You really do, man. Because, you know, once it gets started, it gets started and it's all over the damn place. And that ain't right, man. It really ain't. They know better, but uh, just because they think they know uh, how things are supposed to be, uh, they go running off the mile. That's the way the shit works. Personally, I think it's the best freaking idea in the world grabbing a, you know, a correctional officer because you make your money, do your thing, you live comfortably behind the joint. It is what it is, and that's just the streets, man. But you get a lot of these freaking rubs that uh, have no freaking ideal, or you have people that uh, just have a motorcycle and they have no idea how everything works. And they automatically go off of what this poster says or that poster, meaning, you know, those who comment on these things. And next thing you know, it's all over the damn place. And it gets kind of tiring sometimes. I'm in one of the moods today. Uh, but I'll be better on the second segment again. I'm about to go over to uh, uh, MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com, WMMRDB. And we're going to have a good time with China Dow. Uh, talk to about, we're going to, we go to about 9.30. So, uh, Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem is from 8 to 9.30. It's just on two different platforms. Uh, don't forget you to go over to the Discord channel and all that good stuff. See us over there. Uh, become a member of the Throttle Club. You get a lot of different uh, perks and stuff. And don't forget to uh, donate over to PayPal. We appreciate it with that. I'll see you over on the radio, guys.